I'm Greg Hunter. Welcome to USAWatchdog.com. For the next few weeks, I'm going to be just doing interviews on Friday, not the weekly news wrap-up, so I have to get a really good guest. And I have that in Martin Armstrong at Martin uh, at Armstrong Economics with the Socrates computer program. Uh, rarely wrong. Uh, he's an international demand, a consultant for just about everybody around the world who's anybody in government and otherwise. But Martin Armstrong, thanks for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Oh, it's good to see you again. Uh, I want to start with this because this is why I called you. I mean, I've never seen people question the polls as much as they do now on on legacy lying legacy media. I've never seen them do that. I mean, Jesse Waters is like, wow, they're oversampling Democrats, and you know, you're hearing that. Uh, well, you're hearing you're hearing stuff like this. Uh, just a you know a few days ago, Harris leads Trump by six points nationally before Democratic National Convention, and I'm sure she's going to get a huge bump after the hate fest that they're calling a convention uh, up in Chicago. But I asked you, could you run the numbers for Socrates like you did with Biden, her approval rating? Uh, my friend did this that I've been comparing you to double source this with. And he said, I just ran them. They're at about eight and a half to nine percent, somewhere in that neighborhood. Did you run these numbers? What are her real approval ratings? It isn't 45, 50 percent. No, it came in around ten and a half. Uh, and <clears throat> I think you have to, you got to question what they're doing when you just look at the Gallup poll. And they basically have put down confidence in government at 7%. So how can she possibly be 40, 50, 60%? I mean, I just, I, it, it's illogical. Just completely illogical. Um, so when you see these polls where, oh, Kamala, she's winning in the swing stakes, or she's only down by two, or she's only up by three, or that... What are they doing? What is this just I mean the polls are just propaganda at this point, are they not? Yeah. Uh look, they were propaganda basically uh back in 2016. They all said that Hillary was going to win, was going to be, you know, she was going to sweep uh basically Trump underneath the, the the carpet. The same thing they were doing in London with Brexit. Uh, in fact, Nigel Farage came down and spoke at our 2019 conference in, in Rome, and he said, of course, he was there. He said, we were the only ones that even said he was going to win. Every poll said he would lose. Uh, it, look, if you did a poll and say, oh, well, this 10,000 people have been sampled. Yes, but that's very nice. But if they're all in Washington, D.C., I think, yeah, okay, fine. Trump's going to have maybe 5%, you know. It's a, you can manipulate this stuff so easily that way. Our computer just simply looks at the economics of it. And what's happening, uh, just look at it on a global scale. Uh, you know, our computer says that Trump should win. But this is not, you know, an aberration. In, in Europe, the EU elections... Everybody was shocked. They flipped the other way. All right. Uh, in France, same thing happened. UK, uh, conservatives thrown out. It, it's not even a left-right sort of thing. Even in Bangladesh, the Iron Lady got chased out of the country. All right. Uh, it's whoever is in power, just throw the bums out. That's basically what's what's taking place on a global scale. Um, do you think um, this this RFK has dropped out of the race? And mm -hmm. holy cow, uh, I got to tell you, uh, I want to read this because it's. I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, he uh, this is at uh, this is Erlon. He's still uh, um, uh, speaking uh, as we do this interview. But RFK exposes uh, DNC corruption. I'm just going to go full screen just for a second. Uh, and backs Trump in battleground states. Uh, whoa, I want to get your comment on uh, what this means to, to Trump and what this means to the campaign. He says, uh, RFK Jr., Democrats have become the party of war, censorship, corruption, big pharma, big tech, big ag, big money, wanting to abandon democracy. I guess it's safe to say that the Democratic Party today is not the uh, same party as uh, his uncle JFK or his father, who was attorney general at one time. Uh, RFK, now this is RFK Jr. Uh, speaking of that, I know you're 
I, I, I know you've been pushing to have RFK Jr. as a running mate with Trump, and that doesn't look like it's going to happen because he got Vance, but he has quit. And uh, do you, Is there another job that you think that, that RFK should take on, and is this a serious, a serious thing? I heard AG, uh, Attorney General, holy smokes. Yes. Let's talk about that. Well, I wasn't advocating that he be vice president. Vice president is just a placeholder. All right. You know, they they just show up at the cocktail parties, basically. Um, no, I was always pushing for him to be attorney general. And uh, I think maybe, you know, I got him to, you know, his eyes may have lit up. I don't know. <laughs> uh, when I said, look, if you, if you take attorney general, you can even indict Pfizer. All right. Uh, others have been, you know, suggested, oh, maybe head of NIH or, or FDA or something like that. It, it, it doesn't really have the teeth. Uh, Attorney General, and the reason I've been pushing him for that, and I would, you know, urge everybody to write letters to, to, to basically uh, to Trump uh, to advocate that, is that... Uh, uh, RFK is against war, just as he said he's endorsing Trump because mainly he's against war, he's against the, the, the chronic health issues, and he's against the censorship, all right? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, what the Democratic Party has done is outrageous because they, are, they have been captured by these neocons, uh, and... <clears throat> I mean, as you know, I used to be, you know, part of the vetting process for people that, you know, were going to, wanted to run for president, etc. I met with Ross Perot and, and different people back then. And uh, it was always about, you know, who is the smartest, etc. And then just to win, they, they, were, they went with Bush Jr. And the people behind the scenes... Or were the ones that picked his cabinet. It wasn't Bush that picked Cheney or anything like that. Um, I was even asked to, to take the position of uh, chief economic advisor in the White House, and I said, no, I'm not going to give up my company uh, for a two-year stint in the White House. Not, not interested, all right? But um, they basically, <clears throat> you have these neocons that are there and... I can tell you back even when Reagan was there uh, and Gorbachev uh, basically was taking down communism and Reagan wanted to go meet with them and I can tell you what they said back then um, because I was there I mean they were saying at that stage in the game all right fine you're not communists oh but you can never trust a Russian all right. They tried to stop him from even going to meet with Gorbachev, and he rejected their advice and went anyhow. But the neocons, in my opinion, are, uh, you know, back in the 50s, we had to hide underneath our desks and, and nuclear, you know, attacks and, and drills and things of that nature. And you have McCarthy error. So these people, I think, grew up just paranoid and hated Russians because uh, they were communists. All right. When communism fell, I think, honestly, they just um, they didn't change. You know, it's they just got to the point where the, their whole life was consumed with this hatred of, of Russians. And... Um, this is it. This is why they've had these endless wars. Uh, you can look on YouTube. Um, McNamara, who was the new comeback uh, in the Kennedy administration um, and Johnson administration, took us into, into Vietnam. And in his YouTube uh, apology, because he apologized before he died, he said we were wrong. Uh, they thought Russia was involved. And he said they were not. It was just a civil war. Same thing with Afghanistan. Same thing with, um, you know, Syria. Uh, you name it. I mean, they've been in. It's always about taking down Russia. 
All right, they wanted to go into Syria because Syria Assad refused to put a pipeline from Qatar to to Europe, which would have cut off the the gas sales from Russia. This is what they've been about all the time. When back in the day in the 50s and 60s when they were building the pipelines from Russia, uh, they advocated putting sanctions on any German company that provided them pipe. Uh, This hatred that they have is systemic and it goes back a long time. And it does not matter what the Russians do one way or another, these people just want to uh, basically destroy Russia. Um, and, you know, I, I have spoken with RFK, and this is what he's anti war. This is why he has endorsed Trump. All right. He knows about the neocons, um, he is very well, you know, uh, advised in that. Now, why would I want him to be AG? AG is, Attorney General, is the most powerful position domestically, even more so than the President. Just look at what Garland has done to Trump. All right? And they could, if he takes the AG position, he could indict these neocons, he could indict Pfizer. If he takes the head of NIH or something like that, it has no power. He still has to go over hat in hand and beg the attorney general to please do something. Um, you really want a clean house? Really drain the swamp? We want Trump as a president and you want uh, RFK as attorney general. Not VP um, or anything else. Attorney general. He's, a, he's one of, a very good lawyer. He would bring in people of like mind, and uh, he understands the real problems. Fine, they may disagree on some other issues, but he's also against the border. Um, And look, the Democrats have just, they have been seized, usurped by these neocons. And just look at, you have that guy, uh, look, Krinzinger, whatever his name, Christian Zinger, whatever, the, the, the failed <clears throat> Republican. Uh, and he's out there now. Um, he started this thing with, you know, I think even uh, Dick Cheney's daughters involved in it. Republicans <clears throat> for Kamala. Uh. Why? Um, I knew Bill Crystal, as you know. I mean, he even spoke at one of our conferences back in the 90s. And Bill Crystal, his father's the one that started the neocons. And I used to argue against him. Uh, <clears throat> he wrote the book to justify going into Iraq. And he was buddy buddy with Dick Cheney. And the, they claimed that they wanted to uh, take out Saddam Hussein, Assad, and Gaddafi. And then this would bring peace to the Middle East. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> A, a former CIA agent has come out, and uh, since it's been declassified, he can open his mouth. And he's, I, I put an interview of him on our site. <clears throat> he came out and he told the truth. He said the whole Iraq war had nothing to do with anything. They had planned on going in Iraq. They thought they could take down the country, just like this guy Christinger says, oh, we can beat Russia in three days. Um, they thought they would be able to take, you know, Saddam down in 30 days. And he says the plan was then to move directly into Iran. All right. Only because they got bogged down in, in Iraq, they could not go and they wanted to conquer the entire Middle East. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I want to come back to RFK. Is this a game changer for Trump? If he is, he, are you talking to the Trump people about about RFK Jr. being the Attorney General, are you talking? I mean, can you? Oh, even, I'm talking to everybody I possibly can. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you. T- I mean, you talk to you, you. I know you're a very connected guy. So that is a real possibility. This isn't a pipe dream. This is something you hope for. You are working behind the scenes to make this happen. I'm trying. I'm pulling every string I've got. Um, wow, is domestically, it tr- uh, international. Um, are the Trump people amenable to this? Are they like, hmm? 
Yes, I think so. Wow. I, I don't know about the a, a, the AG, but um, look, the reason I ended up kind of knowing some of these people is that back in 2016, Trump had offered um, RFK to head of vaccine commission. I, I don't know if much of this is out, but um, <clears throat> so he agreed. They were going to work together back then. And a few months before the COVID, you know, shots began, all right, the whole nonsense with that, uh, I believe it was Pfizer was one of the ones there twisting arms in Congress uh. to make sure that any vaccine commission was shut down a few months before COVID. Boy, that was a deadly thing. Yes, I Emmy. Mean, look, this was all planned. I told you before that uh, I knew people that had gotten a phone call from Klaus Schwab months before COVID even happened, saying a virus is coming. This whole thing was just, you know, orchestrated, basically. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's why I didn't take the vaccine. And, you know, um, a lot of people I know, I just told them, do not get involved. I'm just telling you. Uh, and Good, I mean, I had taken you. every other vaccine. I had my kids vaccinated. I mean, I just knew what was going on behind the scenes. And when they kicked RFK off and shut down the vaccine commission that that Trump wanted, I mean, it was all twisting arms and saying, if you don't do this, kick this out, then you don't get basically lobbying money for your next election. Uh, so... Uh, that, you know, I knew that there was a connection from back then. All right. And I also knew that he, that RFK was against war, against the neocons. All right. And uh, it was also against the, the whole opening of the border. Are, are they going to be able to cheat um, Trump out? I mean, it looks very lopsided to me. I, it, the gaslighting is to the realm of ridiculous. Are they still going to be able to to get around everything and cheat uh, Donald Trump out of this election? Because it looks like your computers say landslide. Uh, the all the what I'm seeing looks like looks she looks like an, an imbecile. Uh, and I'm sorry they haven't did a they had did, didn't do any policy uh, talk at the Democratic National Convention. It was a hate fest of hate fests. Uh, uh, can they cheat Donald Trump out of this uh, 2024 election? I am very concerned about that. Um, I had a meeting in Berlin, uh, and <clears throat> maybe this was maybe I don't know two months ago, whatever. After we did the uh, conference in London, and <clears throat> uh, I won't say who it was with, but you know, very high, well, high connected people, and we were talking about. It and I said, "Look, the computer says that Trump will win." However, I said my personal opinion. And I told them then, and I did put it on the blog. I said, I think that they are going to probably try to assassinate him. I said, I wow. cannot imagine them allowing him to win. And they said, oh, come on, that much? I said, look, you just don't know the playbook. I, I do. All right. And when they, they pulled that, I got all these phone calls. Oh, my God, you were right. Look, this is what's at stake. And I am concerned very much so that um, they would do something along this lines. Uh, I think they will. I can't see how they possibly can allow him to win. Although the computer says, um, I mean, you can look at our projections for the last elections and whatever. Uh, this one shows on two of the six models that he could get 61 percent and another one to 59 only three presidents in history ever got 60 percent that was fdr one time johnson after the kennedy assassination and nixon when he said he was going to take us out of vietnam anything else you look at uh, obama i think he won by 51 and a half percent this is typically what happens all right and they pretend it's this, this wonderful mandate and it's not they get you know maybe a two percent you know plus that's it um <clears throat> so I am concerned that he gets in. I've been pushing, you know, RFK to join in, and 
<clears throat> I think that that would really secure that type of 60% you know, result. Now, how do they deal with this? Uh, <clears throat> Trump now knows the game. All right. As I said before, even with Bush Jr., it's the people behind the curtain that pick the cabinet. They pick Dick Cheney. And they had even asked me to take chief economic advisor. So I know these people. I've been there. All right. When Trump went in, they pulled the same shit. They said, oh, you're not, you know, you're not a politician. You need to give uh, the world confidence. Uh, so they stuck all their, their, you know, cronies in the cabinet. Every one of them starts stabbing them in the back. John, John Bolton. Bolton Etc. I mean, um, you know, John Bolton would basically invade Canada to get three people. <laughs> uh, if three Russians were there, let's go get them. If not, nuke them. So you, uh, you, 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 so you don't, so other than, um, I, I want to make sure I get this right. Other than assassination, you think your computers are saying... They're, they're not going to be able to, to, to rig this. This is too too much of a spread. If, if they do, what's what's going to happen? Uh, it, it, it will be rigged from the illegal aliens. All right? That they're suddenly getting them to, to vote, etc. Um, I mean, there's filmed a whole line uh, here in Florida, which is supposed to be the land of the free and the home of the brave. Very nice. Uh, you go down to, to vote, all you need is a photo ID, and so they're all in line at the DMV to get a driver's license, and you need an address. That's it. I didn't, you know, you don't have to prove you're an American. You know, there are lawsuits being filed now already to, to remove like 500,000 people from polls that haven't proved themselves to be an American. So what's going to happen? I can tell you if they rig it, this way uh, with all these aliens that's the only way I could see them doing it unless they you know assassinate him called yo he got monkey pox and suddenly died or something uh, but <clears throat> this is going to turn into a Camilla wins this is going to turn into a Supreme Court case there's gonna be so many legal you know things filed um, you're talking about a disputed election. The computer does warn, and I'm telling you right now, I've said this before, it warns that the 2024 election may be the last. Uh, it is so corrupt. Just what, what RFK has just explained. Um, look, I can tell you that I had, you know, what I've told people in advance. I was told Biden would never be the, the candidate. He's going to stay in and resign after, all right, after the Republican convention to prevent them from, you know, using it for not even knowing who they're, they're facing. They never had a debate in the history of this country between two people that were never, ever even nominated yet. All right. Um, and one Democrat who's kind of middle of the road, basically after the, that debate said, well, now the world sees what we've seen for two years. All right. Wow. This is what the neocons want. All right. They want it's a puppet. not even Biden. I mean, they, they basically sacrificed the guy. I felt kind of sad for him, really. They'll eat their own. Uh, they put him up there for the, for the debate to show the world you, right. you, you call that, you, listen, you called that. You called that ahead of time. You said, listen, now there's debates. No debate, no debate, no debate. Now there's debate. They're doing it so they can trash him. Bing! Yeah. Another right, correct call for you, Martin Armstrong. Uh, yeah, they did not uh, put in Hillary. Some people are saying, oh, they're going to change out Kamala. Are they going to change out Kamala at this point? No. No, no, no. no. Okay, so they settled on Kamala, uh, much to the chagrin of Hillary. But, uh, boy, she couldn't be any more... I mean, Charles Denner came on and said, listen, you know, we're going to have bad economic problems. And, you know, when you know winter's coming, you get a winter coat. Uh, and Trump is a winter coat. That was his quote. And, and I thought if Trump's a winter coat, Kamala is a bikini or she's buck naked. Right? Well, look, I mean, we're headed for uh, bad economic times no matter who's going to be in office. She doesn't even understand economics or how to spell it. All right? Okay. Um, 
But but we're yeah. headed for bad times, correct? No matter who's it. Well, we're going into recession. If she, if, if the, you just look at what the Democrats are proposing, it, it's absurd. All right, if you end up taxing unrealized gains, oh, it's only going to be the the, the people over a hundred million, blah blah blah. All right, okay, fine. If I'm Jeff Bezos, now they want to impose a twenty five percent tax. Say, oh well, I've made six billion dollars on my stock, <laughs> so I, I want twenty five percent of that. What does that mean? It means I have to sell the stock to get cash to pay it. All right. Wow. You're going to see all these people being forced to sell. You're going to have a stock market crash like you have never seen. All right. Um, you know, you're looking at uh, a, at least a, cr- a crash if, if they stuff in Hillary one way or another here. You're going to have a crash going into 2026, two years down, like the Great Depression, and it's going to be really bad. Uh, and just like the income tax, all right, when they put that in, it's just always the same bullshit. Oh, only the rich are going to pay. <laughs> Back then, it was the rich was defined as anybody who made more than three thousand dollars a year. All right, I had my. Great grandfather told me that he used to make twenty dollars a week as one twenty dollar gold piece back then. <clears throat> um, so three thousand dollars and up was going to be the income tax. Oh, so we're not going to tax the the middle class. Same routine always. All right. So what do you got? All right. Now everybody pays income tax. If you fail to file, they put you in prison. All right. <clears throat> World War II comes, we got payroll taxes because they don't trust you even sending in the money. Uh, and <clears throat> it's always the same scheme. I was in Australia when they were pushing the luxury tax, all right? And what was the luxury tax? Oh, we're going to, had a great slogan. We're going to tax their Ferraris, their fur coats, and their French wines. I only saw two Ferraris in Sydney because they were already 100% taxed. All right, fur coats maybe down in Melbourne and not in Sydney. And nobody ever gave me any French wine anytime I went there. It was always Australian. All right, but it was a great slogan. Everybody cheered. Yeah, go get them. What was in it? All electrical products. TV, phone, whatever. It was suddenly a luxury. And then they kept expanding it to, to Australia. What is basically, you're only entitled to a vacant lot with a tent. Anything else is, is basically a luxury now. Um, uh, and th- down there, they're, they've even come out openly. Whereas here, at least the Democrats, I think they're still keeping it under wraps. But um, I, I didn't watch the convention, so maybe somebody mentioned it. But in Australia, it's not fair that you die and you, lo- you leave your child 100000 and the other person only gets ten. All right, that everything when you die should go to the state. Oh, boy. Everybody should start from zero. Oh, we have to have inclusion and fairness, you see. Well, you know, it, this is what's going on. And you, you talk about, a, you know, she wants to put in a 44.6% uh, capital gains tax. So guess what? You, your kids just got old enough, they left, okay, a lot of people, then they sell the house, they want to downsize. Sell the house, oh, now, okay, 44.6% capital gains tax on all the profit you just made from your house sale, all right? It's, look, <clears throat> this is what government is, and I've argued with them for, for you know, Almost 50 years. No matter what you take in, you will always spend more. Why? Because it's Marxism. They do not know how to run for election honestly. Vote for me and I'll give you this. I'll steal it from this guy and give it to this guy. Well, This uh, is what it's about. So you're always going to have deficits. Well, well, we are still paying interest on World War II. Well, and speaking of which, you said that, you know, uh, what Powell can't say is floor, uh, war is inflationary. And he can't say that uh, because we have all these wars going on, mainly uh, this uh, hundreds of billions of dollars blown in um, 
uh, Ukraine. But uh, this, uh, this when I read you this head, I went through the headlines. Uh, he said, oh, that has to do with war. Powell vows to cut rates with stock, home prices, and rents, and food at all-time high. And you said, I, I, that has to do with war. Tell me why this thinking has to do with war. First of all, um, <clears throat> lowering interest rates has never done anything. All right? um, just look at, I mean, interest rates were 6% at the peak in 1929, and they were taken all the way down to 1%. All right? They have never supported the market. Interest rates declined dramatically from 2007 all right, into 2009. Did not stop the decline. It never does. All right. Um, and yet they have to for psychological reasons. But Powell knows very well what broke Brenton Woods. It was, Viet it was Vietnam. All right. I think a three-year-old with a pocket calculator could figure out it was going to go bust. You fix gold at $35, fine, but you do not limit the amount of dollars you create. Eventually, you're going to have more dollars that are floating out there than you have gold to pay for. It. They, you know, government, those in power will always make rules and regulations for their own self-interest. All right? That's one of the reasons we need, you know, really uh, term limits. But, um you know, it, this is simply life. When you get into this, you know, Ponzi scheme of what it is, we will crash and burn. There's no way out of this. All right. And they've already dumped at least a hundred billion into Ukraine. All right. It, it, nothing at, is going to come out of this. Ukraine has been completely destroyed. Uh, and... Um, <clears throat> I mean, what are you going to get? We're, we're fighting I mean, inside Russia now. Basically against Russia. That's it. But we're fighting inside Russia now. You were talking about that. Oh, well, our troops aren't there, but we are paying mercenaries. What, what's going on? We, oh, yeah. but tell me about what's going on. You have uh, offices over in uh, Ukraine, uh, so you have some contacts, and you have contacts all over the world. What's going on with this uh, whole uh, thing where we're inside the borders of Russia with our paid-for mercenaries? Is that what's going on? Yes, oh. we have technically invaded Russia, um, and it's it's plausible denial. Okay, what, what's happening? You can look at our site. I did a, a large um, report on mercenaries. All right, up to seventy percent of the people uh, in these wars in Iraq and, and and Afghanistan were mercenaries. Wow. Why? Because the neocons, all they get is this budget, all right? It's Congress that is supposed to declare war constitutionally. So how do you get around that, all right? You just hire companies like Blackwater. They send the troops in. You don't have to report to deaths. You don't have uh, basically uh, VA you know, health care for them. You don't have to give them pensions or, you know, the, you know, pay for their education in, in, in the future. Um, that's it. They're, they're, and, and most of these people, if you look at it, do a little bit of research. You'll see they're not even always Americans. They're hiring people from around the world. They're mercenaries. Wow. Right? Is, is, is Russia pissed about this? They, they've got to be, okay, technicality, but you're paying to attack us inside our country, right? How long does that go on for? I was told that they had called in people from the American uh, embassy to complain about this. I mean, so you can say, oh, well, it's not us. This is Blackwater invading you, not us. All right. So, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it's like, uh, like, really, I mean, in, in a civil matter, if I hired somebody to kill my wife, which I don't really have, but uh, and they pulled the trigger or oh, I didn't do it, he did. You know, and civilly, I would still be charged for conspiracy to murder. Uh, let's. I'm, I'm, I'm bouncing around here because I know your time is short. Uh, let's say Trump does get in. Is he going to have to get medieval? Is he going to have to go to war? Is he going to have to call the Marines up and arrest everybody on the seventh floor of the FBI? I want everybody in the DOJ and management arrested. I mean, is he going to have to go cuckoo on these people to get them to 
to back I off. I don't know if it's cuckoo, but I mean, I, this is one of the reasons I want um, RFK to take AG. Um, if he becomes the attorney general, he has the power to indict, but the attorney general has absolute immunity, whereas the president does not. All right. Ah. The president is maybe more powerful internationally, uh, but domestically, just look at what Garland has done. All these lawsuits against Trump. Oh, well, I didn't do it. They did. You know, uh, it's they don't do anything without his permission. Trust me. It's, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and is it going to be uh, if, if Trump does take over? Is it going to is it going to be rough? It's going to be violent. I don't say he's violent, but I think he's got to be looking at this uh, realistically at this stage in the game. Um, after they attempted to assassinate him, I mean that was clearly a setup. Um, you know, and and it's out of their playbook. Um, I mean, it, they always use when there's going to be an assassin like that. All right, <clears throat> ABC put out an, a a little you know watching this thing for a timeline. The sniper uh, that was pointing the gun at, they waited for him to shoot before they took him out. <laughs> Why? And, and they were pointing their guns at him before. Oh, but I can't shoot unless he tries to kill, you know. I mean, if Trump didn't move his head, he would be dead. Boy, oh boy! Um, so, so, uh, th so this is uh, back to the future cast now. So, this is going to be, if he wins, it's going to be, it's going to be some turmoil, really, in the country. Look, I don't care who wins. We're looking at serious civil unrest from, regardless of who wins. Neither side's going to accept it. Uh, our computer's been uh, phenomenal on on war, projecting war. I mean. Um, Look, I mean, it. you can even Google it down. I mean, at, at our 2011 conference, they said, okay, fine, war is going to start in 2014. Uh, on the <clears throat> Google, I mean, our site, you'll see in 2013, I said the computer is projecting Ukraine. All right? Um, sure enough. It, the computers, look, more wars have started in over Crimea than most people realize. That's even where the Black Plague came from. Uh, you know, the, the Mongols uh, invaded Crimea and then the Italians had a fort there. So they started catapulting in uh, people that had the plague from, from Asia. And scared the, the hell out of the Italians. They fled and they took it back to Europe. And then 50% of the you know European population basically died. Uh, Crimea has been a place that has been disputed since Roman times. So it's not something that was out of the, the, the ordinary. The computer was, has every war in it every, going back. Does you your know, computer uh, show World War III starting in the next between now and the end of the year? Yeah, this is my concern. It's, it's uh, these guys... Um, Look. So they, wait, wait, wait. So you think that we may have World War Three before the end of twenty four? My concern is that they have only two choices. One, they have to assassinate Trump again, get him out of there, one way or another, or they will try and trap him in. So which means they may start war as soon as in September. Uh, they need to, to create a war uh, to that he cannot exit from. All right. They already have their people in play in, in, in NATO. Uh, NATO is a uh, really a terrorist organization. Uh, you know, it's, all it does is preaches war, war, war. Why? Because, I mean, basically... Um, NATO was afraid with climate change coming that money was being diverted from them to climate change. So they need to constantly say, oh, Russia is going to invade and take over all of Europe if Ukraine goes. Russia is not interested in that. I mean, that's absurd. All right. They keep using the same playbook from like communism. When Khrushchev, who was a religious 
pra you know, practically, uh, we will bury you. It was a philosophy that capitalism was evil and communism was going to eradicate it. That was that. That's what it was all about. The Russian people no more want to invade Europe than the European people want to invade Russia or Chinese in America, whatever. It's always the leaders that do this stuff. It's not the actual people. So, uh, so uh, let, let, I want to close up here with the economy. Lowe's, is, uh, Lowe's the hardware store, is talking about a challenging uh, micro, uh, macroeconomic backdrop hitting homeowners. Home Depot came out and said the same thing. They're warning of sales, profit decline, and weak consumer spending. Um, uh, oh, are, is the economy, uh, the, 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 if you listen to the Fed, oh, it's fantastic. We're going to cut rates. Uh, is it fantastic? Is the economy fantastic, uh, Martin Armstrong? Or are we headed for a real, uh, a real uh, you know, uh, water spout on the water type moment? No, you're going into a recession, which really will not bother until 2028. But it, the, the causes are <clears throat> several. One, inflation is not going to subside. It was created by COVID by locking everybody down. I had emails from farmers that said they had to kill 30,000 chickens because they couldn't buy food because no truck could bring it to them. And they couldn't take the chickens and take them to market because no truck was allowed to do so. Um, so you created shortages that set in motion the whole inflation thing. Then you had Biden stupidly listening to these neocons and they cut off basically, uh, oh, remove SWIFT, you know, Russia from SWIFT. That ended up creating the BRICS uh, because a lot of countries began to realize, hey, if we don't do what America tells us to do, they will remove us. So BRICS wasn't about the dollar or gold or anything else. It was geopolitical. All right. And uh, both Russia and China have complained for years that, you know, why do they have to use the currency of their enemy? And so then you have all this talk about war. All right. You have Blinken who could care less about the economy or the American people. He's out there threatening China, we will go to war if you invade Taiwan. He's threatening North Korea and over South Korea. He's then using Ukraine to, to be the, the vanguard to overthrow Russia. All right. And they openly said they want regime change in Russia. All right. And then you, you have them going after uh, Iran in the Middle East. That's four wars. All right. We do not have the personnel, the troops, to put boots on the ground on four places. This is insane. Now, worse than that is that China was the bit largest holder of U.S. debt. They dumped $53 billion in the first quarter. You got Blinken, who is a complete idiot. I'm sorry, but an idiot. He's threatening China over Taiwan. China then starts selling our debt. How do governments really default? The debt could be quadrillion dollars. It doesn't matter. As long as there is somebody standing in line to buy the next issue of debt. With China selling, all right, <clears throat> what you've done is you've created the first prong in a sovereign default. A sovereign default happens when you cannot sell the new debt to pay off the old. And, and you think we're headed towards a sovereign default? Oh, the, we're, there's no question about it. Uh, um, gold, 2500 Europe, is, Europe I, I had just gotten back from Europe, had spoken to three governments. They're all pro-war against Russia. All of them. All right. You even had Estonia come out saying, unbelievably, oh, Russia is too big and needs to be broken up into different into smaller republics. What if if well, wait, why are they doing that? Why, United States? why are they doing that? Because the economy is tanking. They cannot pay the debt. And so they, they want war. It. Just go on eBay. You can buy all the bonds. There was a sovereign default. All right. After World War II, what did they do? Every government defaults on debt, and we start over. Is this right. why gold is twenty five hundred dollars an ounce as we as we speak? 
over this, tweets. This is why. All right. So you're going into recession also because the more you keep beating the, the war drums here, people lose confidence in the future. If they don't know what's going to be happening, particularly with this election, you pull back. She, if, if Camilla wins, um, ta she, her, her tax proposes $5 trillion and more taxes. $5 trillion. All right? And I don't care how much she taxes. They'll still spend more. You know, the, it, the Fed raises rates to stop inflation. Guess what? They no longer work. Why? Because the government is the biggest borrower in the room. Does anybody in, in, in Congress or Parliament in Europe say, oh, gee, they raised interest rates, so they want us to spend less? Never. So we now have interest expenditures exceeding a trillion dollars. And let's make this clear. They always talk about the rich. All right. Confiscate all the money. Warren Buffett, Bezos, Gates, whatever. You haven't even paid the interest expenditures for one year. Wow. And, 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 I'll be, that. and as we close, a trillion I'll... dollars. You're talking about people that got five, six billion dollars. That's it. Let's talk just a little bit about gold and it being plus twenty five hundred dollars an ounce. Where's it going? Why is it up this high? Where's it going? People are worried about the debt. People are worried about the war. Is that right? Confidence in government. Ah, yes. It's what you've done. Look, you have to. You know, people. You know, put out nonsense about gold. Oh, the central banks are buying because they think it's going. To, central banks are buying not because they think it's going to go up. They don't care if it goes down. What this is about is we go to war. They know what U.S. All right, won't pay any interest expenditures and they'll default on whatever debt China holds. They got to be an idiot to hold any U.S. debt. When you have Blinken threatening World War III to them, you better sell it, which is what's going on. Wow. So they're buying gold because they can't also buy euros. No European debt, no American debt. So they've been buying gold. Central banks have been buying gold because it's neutral. It's not political. They don't care if it goes up or down. That's not the issue. This is all a geopolitical stage fight right now. And that's what BRICS is about. Just, you know, step back from the bullshit of, of oh, it's going to go up because of this, that. Look, this is, you know, gold is neutral. And that's what its role is. And it's not political. And they're afraid that we go to war, and that's what we're saying. We're, gonna, we're already inside of Russia. And they're like yeah. freaking out going, oh, they're going to default on all this debt. Absolutely. They're afraid of default, so gold goes up. You have Lincoln <sighs> threatening China. If you aid Russia, we're going to remove you from SWIFT. Hello, are you a complete idiot? You have no idea of how the economy works, or anything. The, you know, then Janet Yellen's got to hop on a plane, go over to China, and say, oh, please continue to buy our debt. And they go, well, let me see. I should buy another $100 billion so you can buy missiles to shoot me? Yeah. I mean, there is, this is the problem with Biden as president. And they want Camilla. You need a strong president. All right? Otherwise... When you go to one of these cabinet meetings, everyone is the head of, of all the various agencies, all right? And they're like two-year-old children. Everybody wants their own way, all right? So the president is supposed to be the strong man in the room. He's the one, no, don't do that because the Treasury will then, you know, be in a difficult position. Nobody's there. All right, so Biden is just, you know, in Delaware 40% of the time, cognitively not even there, and this is why they want Camilla. She uh, won't even do a press interview. <laughs> yeah, she's the, a puppet. Uh, I, will, I, uh, I want to close there with her. Uh, you've given some great, I mean, who knows what's going to happen. But, you know, uh, to summarize, you think Trump could win, 
uh, they're going to fight like hell, and then if they can't assassinate him again, maybe we'll lock him into a badass war, uh, and inflation on the rise, and debt defaults uh, may be coming, and that's why gold is plus $2,500 an ounce. Did I get all yes. that right? Yes. Um, I mean, gold will back off, <clears throat> and then, you know, retest support, and then go up again. But um, you, this is what's going on here. Uh, we are in a period of great uncertainty. <sighs> and <clears throat> look, the computer says Trump should win. Personally, you know, um, I don't know how the hell they allow that to happen. You know, but, you know, they have to trap them in to a war or they kill them. One or the other. I mean, I don't, I, these people are unconscionable. They really are. Wow, trapper kill. He took out JFK because he didn't want to go into um, Vietnam, and he was against. Uh, he was basically against the, the whole. You know, the CIA wanted to disband them. You can also Google. I mean, I met, you know, Richard Nixon on the beach in New Jersey. All right. <clears throat> there was a tape. And when they were saying, oh, he, he tried to, you know, blackmail the CIA. Well, what was it about? The head of the CIA was in his office and he said, I know who killed JFK. All right. <clears throat> the guys that get caught in, in Watergate. Oh, my God. They were two CIA guys. Oh, you got me. OK. All right. <clears throat> when he left office. All right. They did everything to throw him out because he wanted to also do what JFK did and shut down the CIA. All right. So when he left office, Google it. He is the only president that what did he do? He said, no, thanks to Secret Service and hired his own people. Wow. 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 What uh, does that tell you about the Secret Service? I want to uh, uh, I want to talk about your conference, which I'm sure is going to be a huge another blowout sellout you have uh in person in orlando this is in november tickets are on sale i'll put a link in there i don't get any paid for any of this i just love your stuff you can also get you're also going to have streaming again right yes it'll be streamed to around the world um it's going to be the week after the election so we'll know <laughs> who won <laughs> Uh, this is going to be probably very, very interesting this time. It's, this is going to be a wild, uh, a wild conference, I would say. An age of uncertainty. We a period. What, what did you say it was? A period of great uncertainty. Uh, the, that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Martin well, Armstrong. Thanks. They're uncertain. They don't spend. The, oh. They save. That's yes. what happens in a depression and a recession. If they, you cannot convince them that. <clears throat> Look, we've done studies. You know, the level of interest rates has nothing to do with the stock market. Nothing. If you think the stock market will double next year, you'll pay 20%. But if you don't think it's going to go up 1%, you're not going to pay one. It's always the interest rate minus the expectation. Always. So if you have no confidence in the future because of all this crazy stuff going on, what do you do? You don't borrow and you pull back. Let me see what's going to happen. Wow. Uh, your conference in uh, in November. Tickets are on sale. I'll put a link up for it. Uh, right after the election uh, is when the conference is. Martin Armstrong, thanks for being my first interview back from my heart uh, bypass surgery. Thank you very much, uh, very much for coming on and uh, doing the Camilla number, which is she only has 10.5% approval rating. Wow. 10.5%. Well, I mean that. Thank you for coming back. I mean, uh, I think you got the same judge. We're both sentenced here to be through all the that, strings. That's right. All the glory to Jesus and Jehovah on that one, my friend. And that is not a joke. Thank you, Martin Armstrong, for joining us today on USAWatchdog.com. Well, it's always a pleasure. Take care of yourself. And before we close, we have to get my advertisers in. Uh, discount Gold and Silver Trading. There's a number. Everybody has numbers. They'll all come to the phone. Uh, permission to speak freely. That's the satellite phone store. Uh, clean water, dry element. Uh, phone number right there. And also, last but not least, Weston Scientific. The air scrubbing technology of Weston Scientific. Just don't trap germs. Kill them naturally. And the phone number right there at the bottom. Thank you for again for supporting me and supporting my sponsors.